Hello and welcome to 15 Minute Gamer. This is Onrush. It is available on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC for a recommended retail price of $54.99. I got it from Boomerang Games and I rented it as always. Because this wasn't a game that was on my radar, really. It was. I kind of haven't seen it advertised or anything. I don't know if I've just missed the advertising or what, but it, you know, it's by the people that made Drive Club and Motorstorm as well, and it has a lot in common with Motorstorm. I don't know if you ever played that. I think it was back on the original PlayStation 3. Um, and yeah, Code Monsters are involved in this in Deep Silver, for those who don't know. So this is an arcade racer at heart, I would say. It's nothing like Gran Turismo Forza, which seems to dominate the market as that simulation kind of gameplay. And not that's a bad thing, but sometimes they're a little bit too serious and I'm just like, I just want to have a little bit of fun. And kind of beyond that, the only game you can kind of have that fun on really is, say, Mario Kart or something. Burnout Paradise Remastered came out and again that was like, hey, this is how you have fun. I love Burnout Paradise. What a game. I love that game. Um... So yeah, when um, this when I saw it advertised and I saw a few reviews, I was kind of like, hmm, that's an interesting idea. That game looks fun. And just to start off with the graphics, the graphics are amazing. I love the graphics on this game. They work really well and there's some really nice little touches as well with the particle effects, the rain effects, the way like little droplets appear on your screen when you go through a river, for example. Um, when your car explodes, there's little slow motion replays when you get, well, well, when you knock someone out or they knock you out. And, yeah, the gra and it's, you know, it's not up to a Forza standard or a Gran Turismo, but it does it very well. And the art style is really bright and unique. It kind of reminds me of Fortnite, you know, when you have a look at that Fortnite color scheme, it's all bright colors and it's wide beaten player unknown battlegrounds at the moment is just that it's just colorful and this is the same it's colorful the assets are good the track design is beautiful from i think there's about 14 tracks in the game from rolling hills to industrial areas to mountaintops and it just looks all really amazing and uh, there's nothing in here that you kind of look at and go yeah i'm yeah I'm, there's nothing nothing the tracks are designed to get you around and there's nothing in the tracks that are boring, it's all really to be exciting. There's jumps, there's little pillars in the way, there's shortcuts, there's rivers, there's things that you go in and out. Like, there's in one of the industrial levels, there's this big chimney you kind of drive around, and you can go inside of it, you can jump back out. And it just looks amazing, the jumps um, are just really well done, and they're really placed nicely around the map as well. Um, little graphical things such as when you die, your little marker, your death token gets left. And your death token can do things to other players. And that is just something really unique I haven't seen. The models on the cars are really good. Um, sound is where the game lets it down a little bit. The sound's not great. The announcer doesn't seem to be in time with what he's talking about. And it's... Some of the things he's just kind of like... Yeah, shut up. Um, and to be fair, I was playing for sound down after about 10 minutes just sort of watching other things on TV or listening to other things because the announcer just was rubbish and it has this really annoying voice between it uh, where he's trying to be exciting this like woman telling you what sort of events coming up but then there is this offset cool voice that kind of sounds like someone from Robot Wars and when they're explaining what your vehicle does it's like Typhoon and then the woman's like yeah Typhoon it sounds like, it sounds like something from Robot Wars if you've ever seen that so yeah, the sound on that isn't great. The the cars sound okay. There seems to be a lot of noise going on in the game because you got the crashing, you got the things blowing up, you've got this, you've got that, you've got this banging soundtrack. It's like boom, 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 boom all the time to add to the excitement. And again, not really my thing, but it would sound strange with a relaxed soundtrack in the background. So I know why the done it i just kind of wish it sat a little bit better because it just doesn't quite fit for me so even though graphically it's a really impressive sound design there's a little bit lacking for me so let's talk a little bit about the vehicles and the gameplay in this game we'll start with the vehicles and kind of like motor storm i'm gonna keep referencing it back to that because it is very similar in a lot of ways it has different types of vehicles so these are cars trucks there's motorbikes as well and some atvs as well so there's like eight classes 
And why I say classes is because this is a... I don't want to say Overwatch kind of thing, but they're almost like hero cars. So if you want to play as a fast person, you could be the motorbikes. If you want to play as like a tank. And yeah, it's, it sounds weird, but it is like that. It's like a hero game. The cars are the heroes and they all have different traits and can do different things and they have a different rush ability and can help each other out. So it's, it's actually a team game. So you're not racing on your own. You're racing as a team. And as a team, you'll have to do certain tasks and in the race design. So there's kind of like lockdown, which is basically king of the hill. So you've got to stay in the zone and protect it and stuff. So if you're a tank, you'll be kind of knocking the enemy AI out the way. If you're a motorbike, you'll be zooming through to get to your checkpoint first. There are ones where there's the best one, which is called countdown. And what happens is you've both got a timer and you've got to go through checkpoints. And when you go through checkpoints, you've got to go through and go, right, okay, I'm going to get that checkpoint. You'll get some time added to your team's countdown. And the first one to reach zero loses. And each race is like three or four different rounds. So, you know, you might have round one, round two, and then if you win that one, that's it over because it's only four rounds. And there's also one called Switch, which is every time you get, when you die, you have to go to a more powerful vehicle. And when you do die or crash or get knocked out, the game makes you respawn. You've got five seconds before you can respawn and you can get options to choose different vehicles and that sort of thing. So it is a very unusual game and I've not played anything like it. At all. I, I was sitting there going, what is, what is this? There's no fin... I've not seen a track with a finish line yet. And that's kind of weird. There's no finish line. It's just you've got to complete your activity on your track. And sometimes you can be last and have taken no part in anything. And your team wins. And you're kind of like, did I, did I help with that or not? Sometimes you're out first. And it doesn't matter if you're out first. You could be contributing nothing to the race and I found that a little bit weird and I'm going to come back to that in a bit. So how does it work with teams? Basically there's a red and blue team and you have to battle it out and all the teams have like cool names. You know like Monster University where they had all the little names, it's kind of like that so you're red versus blue and there is and because only 5 versus 5 um, kind of thing going on They've added AI cars in between. So you have these, I'm going to call them fodder. And the fodder's job is just for you to earn boost. So they're black and white. So the, you're on the blue team and you have blue markers above your head. There's a red team with red markers. And you'll see these like black, like the black and grey cars that are there to be soft and knocked over just to give you something to do which you can earn boost from. So they're kind of like if you imagine... Um, I can't even think what it'd be like, you know, like, yeah, they're just there to be hit. They're there to be destroyed and they go, you hit them, they go flying off. They're slow. They don't get really involved with the races. And again, I'm kind of like, uh, I don't really understand um, what they're there. I, I can see why they're there, but it's to keep the action going. But they don't look quite right because it's really colourful. And they're just black and grey. It doesn't fit in with the tone of the game. I would have loved to maybe seen them be almost like a faction or something. So, you know, you're the red versus the blues. But then there was like this yellow faction that would smash into you and try and get in your way and help other teams out. Because sometimes it's just like hundreds of them on the map. And it just doesn't quite work for me in that sense um, as I see it. So, as you guess, we've been a team game. It is multiplayer. I have not tried the multiplayer yet because I'm not really a multiplayer racer. But you can you can see how it's geared up. And to be fair, if it's any different from the single player, I'd be very, very surprised. So the single player is there. There is a single player mode to it. It's all right. It's not too bad. And as you go through, as with a normal racing game, it'll give you a set of races to do. You do the races, get enough points, and you can go to the next level as well. And there's not going to be... Many I did pop online to see what the servers were like, and there wasn't that many players. Players in this, I think. I don't know if a lot of people are playing single player, or there's just not many people there. Um, so while it has a lot of positives going for it, and it's a very fun game, there's no denying that. 
There is also some negatives in regards to the um, some of the presentation. I wasn't that keen of the American voiceovers and the over the top kind of thing going on. You know, like typical American in that sense. Um, and also the really high asking price as well. I think this should have been closer to the budget title for my eyes. I would like to have seen it around about the $30, $40 mark. I think that would have sat perfectly. Because um, we still don't have everything in it yet. Still some things to come. And there is going to be DLC as well. Um, so that's what really worries me. Because it's not quite up there for the Gran Turismo and Forza. And who would try it? I, I'm not too sure. Because it is that it is an arcade race. And I think it could have really been set down to that thing. Um... One annoying thing as well is it has a crash cam, so when you knock someone out, it goes to this crash cam. But the game continues in the background, so quite often you'll cash, cra cash cram. That is really hard to say. Crash cam. And then the game will continue, and you crash because the game's continuing in the background. That can be a little bit annoying, I must admit. Um, So, yeah, it's... It's an interesting game. I do want to talk about the vehicles though, but I've discussed there is different types of vehicles. They can all be customized as well. So you can put different skins on them. There is loot crates. I've not found out if you can purchase them yet because I can't even open one. I don't know why. Uh, it just I can't find the option to open one. So there is loot crates, but you can put different skins on the cars and make them look radically different. Like some look like can go from just like a normal buggy to a Humvee, and there's some really cool color schemes as well. And you can look at your avatar. So your avatar can be changed and you wear different clothes. The avatars are kind of like again very over the top, again Overwatchy type things. I imagine they've got little emote dances when you win. So it's like who got the most kills? Who got the most this? Who got the most that? Who got the most this? Who done the most tracks? And kind of gives you that breakdown each time you get XP and you unlock the loot box. So again, it, you know we're going again towards that kind of hero shooter type thing so the cars all have wildly different looks and i like that as well um and that said i've not had a microtransaction forced down my throat yet which is also very very good so i suppose it all boils down to and kind of when looking at this game should you buy it for the price i would say no there's a lot of enjoyment to be had here, and if they put some real good DLC in it and drop the price a little bit, that could really make something unique and different. I think they could have a real big hit on the hands. At $54.99 with some content missing, and in quite a, in a different market with arcade races where we don't really have any, I'm not too sure. I think it's one of them games that you'll rent and have a lot of fun. Or if you can find it in a sale, you know, when the PlayStations have to sale something, you won't go f too far wrong with this game. You know, graphically really good. Sounds alright. It annoys me in some places. Presentation, again, it's good. Annoys me in some places. It's one of them games where kind of like, ooh, that's really good. Then I'm kind of like, oh, that's, that's kind of bad. Um, ooh, one thing I'm talking about is how the cars handle. The cars handle, a lot, as you can imagine, not kid, a lot of fun as well. Uh, you skid and round corners, you're doing jumps, and they'll handle pretty similarly. Um, like the Titans don't feel as heavy as I was expecting and stuff. So again, they all handle really good, but again, it's just that offset um, that you're going to get from it. But overall, it's a game, you've seen what I've got up here, you've, you've heard what I've had to say. If this is your thing and you've got maybe five, six friends that you can play online with and they're going to get the game as well, I can imagine this being a lot of fun. Like coordinating your attacks in some of the modes and lockdown when you kind of go for the circle and just right, you get back, you get, I can imagine that being a lot of fun. The rest of the game is so hectic, I'm not sure how it would work as a team thing. Um, I'm just not sure if it would, but that's something you and your friends will have to find out. Overall from me though, I would put it down as a, a sale or rent type game. It's not quite up there for me. I play a lot of racing games and even though I had fun, I was getting bored very quickly. There's no finish line. I want to feel like I finished first and I've done something in this. You don't get that uh, at all. I didn't have that sense of achievement of winning. It just like went, round one. All right, okay. But the countdown one when you're getting the timer and you're trying to keep that timer going is so amazing. It's just one of the best things in the world. It is a lot of fun. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. If you agree, comment below. If you like the video, just give it a like and a subscribe. And I will catch you all later. Goodbye.